uh, one of our largest populations of salt creek tiger beetles here. We usually find quite a few right in here. The big deal is the salt seep, the seeps, it's, they're available out here, suitable habitat for them, but it's in risky habitat too. Well, I'm Bob Harms. I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Grand Island, Nebraska, and I'm a fish and wildlife biologist. Get him? Yeah. Nope, I gotta fly. Oh, man. Okay. Today, we are along Little Salt Creek, uh, north of Lincoln, Nebraska, and we are collecting Salt Creek tiger beetles, male and female pairs, so as they can be taken to uh, Henry Dorley Zoo and uh, introduced into our rearing and uh, propagation uh, program for future reintroductions here. Yep. Hey, four and four. The Salt Creek tiger beetle is an insect. It's got six legs. It's a carnivore. It's got a two-year life cycle. Uh, the adults that we collect today are only around for about a month. Uh, their whole purpose is to breed and feed and start the new generation. There's two over here. We've seen a decline in the number of individuals per population. So last year's counts were like 250 beetles and that's just incredibly tiny and how this insect holds on, I'm not really sure, it must be a survivor. But all in all, the species is in critical decline and in danger of becoming extinct. Nebraska was once part of a, an inland sea many, many, many years ago. There's a, a tremendous salt resource underneath us and water is still percolating up in some of these areas. The beetles evolved under a saline environment. They're the only beetles that spend a lot of time on the salt like this because the others can't handle it. This area was under a tremendous amount of development pressure at one time and now I see it, the city of Lincoln moving south. The city of Lincoln and Lancaster developed a comprehensive plan that keeps a lot of this area from being overly developed. So we don't have a, sort of an urban sprawl uh, moving in this direction. For the Fish and Wildlife Service, everything we do after we list a species is geared towards recovering the species and eventually delisting it. I'm probably going to be in a retirement home or worse if I, you know, before we ever see a delisting of the Salt Creek tiger beetle given its, given its current situation. These guys are just on Little Salt Creek on three or four different populations. We want to spread the risk of extinction by taking them over the two other creeks as well and reintroducing them. Saline wetlands play a critically important role in this valley. They provide some important functions to people like flood control, uh, water quality, aesthetics, recreation. So if we protect the Salt Creek tiger beetle and the ecosystems on which it depends, then we also provide some good benefits to the public here as well. The public has a right to have fish and wildlife. And if I, that's probably my biggest motivating factor. I want to make sure that the public has an opportunity to see Salt Creek tiger beetles into the future. It's nice to see um, where they're at on the, on the mud banks, the salt and the salinity in the soil, so we can kind of mimic that back uh, at the zoo. Fantastic. We collected the balance of uh, what we needed for our propagation uh, project, and we're in good shape. <laughs> and they're gonna go to Henry Dorley Zoo directly, and then male and female pairs will be put in different containers, and then we'll hope they do their thing. So. My name's Kay Klatt. I'm the supervisor of the Butterfly and Insect Pavilion here at Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo. The project is brand new for us this year and we're very excited to be a part of it. We are helping with the rearing of the beetles. Right now we have 30 specimens. Feed pinheads and what else are you doing? Just worms? Pinheads and wax worms. And we have them for around a week or two paired up in containers so that they'll lay their eggs and we will keep their eggs and raise them. Each female can lay 50, 75, 100 eggs. So if I have 15 females, I could have a lot of eggs here. Hopefully, we could have several hundred. We have the tubes filled with a sifted soil, and we'll actually lay a pinhead cricket or a mealworm on top of the, the tube. Now, the larvae actually come up, and they'll 
grab the food and take it down into the burrow with them and they'll munch away on it. We just lay it on top and they come up and take it down with them. And we're pretty much their um, waiters and waitresses serving them food on their ground and they come up and take it when they're ready. It's a scary thought that there's only there's so few of them and that we're privileged enough that they're allowing us to take care of them. And we're all nervous about it, we are, but we're excited too. This is something that we can make a change. Extinction is, is a horrible word and to be able to be part of a team that can prevent this from happening I think is not only a challenge but I think it makes us all feel good. I think it makes us all feel good to come to work every day and, and it's not just animals from Africa or anywhere else in the world. You can do it right here where you live.